good morning friends we meet again today for uh, the new unit that is stresses in the beams so in today's uh, lecture we are going to study uh, what is basically a beam that we have already discussed in the last lecture we are just going to refresh back uh, what is a beam then we are going to study the theory of simple bending that is uh, how the bending stresses are produced and what is the equation that we are going to derive for calculating the value of bending stress and then what are the important terms that are useful in the bending stress theory that we are going to study and then modulus of section so in today's lecture we are going to cover all these four topics right so introduction to beams theory of simple bending important terms and definitions and modulus of section now to start with first of all definition of beam we'll just recall what we have studied a uh, beam is basically a bar subjected to forces or couples that lie in a plane containing the longitudinal section of the bar according to the determinancy a beam may be a determinant or an indeterminant now this is basically a technical definition in a simple word if a student wants to understand what is a beam we can just define it as it is a horizontal structural member having its length much more greater as compared to depth and width that is called as a beam right now basically beam is subjected to different types of forces types of forces means it may be a udl it may be a gvl it may be a point load so when it is subjected to forces definitely there is development of a moment or a couple so basically when a beam is subjected to forces or couples that lie in a plane containing longitudinal section of the force of a bar then we call it a determinant or an indeterminant beam now determinant and indeterminant beam basically depends upon the conditions of equilibrium and the support conditions that we are not going to go in detail because we are not bothered about that at present now to start with beams so it is extremely a common structural element in buildings majority of the loads are vertical and majority of usable surfaces are horizontal now we know that when we talk about loads load is basically always coming in which direction it will come in the vertical downward direction and the maximum usable surface is what horizontal that is either it is a floor or it is a roof so basically the important uh, usable surface is horizontal but the load coming are vertical that is they are transverse Uh, so you can see that this is a beam and it is subjected to a vertical load or a transverse load basically what is a transverse load load we have already defined they are udl gvl or a point load but when the load is acting perpendicular to the axis of the beam then it is called as a transverse load or a vertical load right so the device for transferring vertical loads horizontally that is basically called as a beam so you can see we have got different different definitions of a beam we defined it as a horizontal structural member okay the second is it is transferring vertical loads okay horizontally that means the load which is coming from the top surface it will be transferred in the lateral direction you can see the arrows right and those arrows are moving towards what the supports the supports which are shown in the green color so the vertical load is transferred horizontally okay so that member is nothing but a beam then the action of beams involve combination of bending and shear so definitely i said that whenever we are having any load on the beam definitely there will be a development of a shear force and bending moment now what beams have to do right so the beams what they have to do is they have to be very strong enough to resist the loads right if they are unable to resist the load what will happen deformation will take place deflection will take place so not they should not deflect too much and the third is they suit the building for size material finish and fixing now if a room is very small 
and if you are taking a very big beam will it be aesthetic no it will be not at all aesthetic that means when you are going for an aesthetic sense at that time you have to select a beam such that it is trying to suit the size of the building okay material finish and fixing all these are the requirements for a beam now checking a beam now checking a beam means what whether the beam is going to deflect or not it is going to be stable or not all those things we are going to check so what are the different points that we are going to test first is stability stability means what whether the beam is able to take the load coming on the structure or is it unable to resist those load and it is going to fail so stability is basically it is able to take the load coming on it right so stability is basically found out by our equation m plus r is equal to 2j okay second is will it fall or not now third is adequate strength adequate strength means if the loads are coming on the beam is the material strong enough to resist that particular load so that is basically adequate strength you can see the diagram shows whether it is breaking or not it is breaking that means it should be strong enough that it is not broken into two pieces or three pieces adequate functionality what is the adequate functionality the main function of the beam is to resist the load coming from the slab and transfer that load to the columns and that column will transfer the load to the ground so it should be able to function in that particular manner and that is why it should not deflect if it is deflecting that means if in a room the beam deflects how it will show it will be not at all aesthetic and it will fail so this is deflection bending of the beam is taking place right so what we need to know we need to know that what is the span of the beam how what is the span of the beam span means what the length between the two supports that means suppose if this is a beam right so if these are the two supports then what is the distance between two supports so that distance between the two supports is called as the length right so this is nothing but the l is nothing but the span okay so span is nothing but the distance between the two supports then so this is what we are showing in this that is distance between the two supports now loads on the beams so loads on the beams they can be udl you can see over here because if i'm talking about a slab so slab will have a uniformly distributed load right so uniformly distributed load or a point load or a gvl then next is material material basically there, there are different types of materials generally we have got an rcc material or a steel material or we have got a wood material so depending upon the type of the material uh, we also know how much amount of deflection can take place due to the loading so it is important to know the material of the beam shape of the beam now basically shape of the beam means what if i talk about a rectangular section of a beam that means we will see only a length of the beam but if the beam is cut then we will be able to see that the cross section of the beam is a rectangle right similarly if it is a i section right very basically i sections are observed i sections are observed in railway tracks okay or in the steel structures so the beam runs like this right but if i cut the section then what shape it is seen it is a i section so what is important is that we should know that what is the shape of the section whether it is a rectangular section or a i section or a triangular section or a circular section and dimensions of the beam because the strength of the beam basically depends upon what the dimensions of a beam modulus of section is important why because it is considering the shape and size of the beam that is why the modulus of section defines the strength of a beam that we are going to cover in the later section uh, and allowable strength and allowable deflection so these all things we need to know 
when we are trying to test a beam what is the span what is the load what is the material and what is the allowable strength now we come to the bending stress now before coming to the bending stress i just want to discuss two types of loads the first is a axial load now basically what do you mean by the term axial load right axial load is the load is acting on the axis now if suppose i take this particular rectangular structure right if i want to find out the cg of this particular structure the cg will be obtained by intersection of diagonals so from this particular cg if the line passes it is called as a centroidal axis right now on this particular centroidal axis if the load acts directly right so that particular load is called as a direct load it is called as a direct load and these direct load are basically of two types one is compressive and second is second is tensile second is tensile so basically two types of direct loads are there compressive and tensile now you can see that if the nature of the force is to push that is you can see over here what is the nature the nature is to push right that means it is compressive in nature and as it is acting directly on the axis it is called as a direct load now due to this direct load what will happen due to this direct load the internal resistive forces will this is trying to deform the beam right that means it will try to reduce the length of the beam okay similarly if the load is acting such that it is trying to pull the beam right that means if this is a bar and the load is acting on the axis and it is trying to pull the beam so what will happen what will happen its length will be increased and the diameter will be reduced that means lateral dimension will be reduced and longitudinal dimension will be increased so the nature of the force is what the nature of the force is pull or we call it as tensile now as it is a direct load so the stresses produced to resist these direct loads they are called as direct stresses okay but now we are interested in studying the bending stresses so in case of bending stresses the load will be acting perpendicular to the axis right that means it will be at an angle of 90 degree to the axis so this load will try to produce bending in the beam right you can see over here bending has taken place and the bending of the beam will be done due to this particular transverse load thus whatever stresses are produced to resist this deflection or bending in the beam are called as bending stresses right so now i think you understand the difference between a direct stress and bending stress in the direct stress the load is acting directly on the axis and it is trying to change the shape of the beam that uh, sorry not shape of the beam size of the beam that is either it will elongate or it will compress or reduce the length of the beam but in case of bending what will happen it will try to deflect so what you will observe in this particular case is that the innermost particles innermost particles they are subjected to compression and the outermost particles they are subjected to tension why i am saying compression and tension you can see over here the length has reduced when reduction in the length takes place it is compression and when increase in length takes place it is called as tension okay so the bending theory says that the innermost layers they are subjected to compression 
as the particles are coming very nearer to each other and the outermost layers are moving away from each other as they are away from each other. So, they are subjected to tension. Now, basically compression and tension depends upon what? It depends upon moment, right? Moment that is sagging or hogging, okay? It will depend whether tension will be up or tension will be in the bottom most fiber. So, it will depend upon what? Hogging and sagging. I will explain you with a very simple example that suppose if you have got a cantilever beam, right? If a cantilever beam is there and it is subjected to a force P over here, right? So, what will be the deflection taking place? The deflection will be in this particular manner, right? That means you can see that the type of moment produced will be what? Hogging, right? The type of moment produced will be what? Hogging. So, when the moment is hogging, then the top fiber will be subjected to tension and the bottom fibers will be subjected to compression because the moment is what? Hogging. But if I take a simply supported beam, right? This is a simply supported beam. Suppose our reaction is R A and over here reaction is R B. Now, what will happen? It will try to produce moment like this. So, it will try to sag, right? So, the type of moment is what? Sagging. Now, when the sagging moment is there, then the internal fibers will come nearer to each other and they will be subjected to compression. They will be subjected to compression. Whereas, the bottommost layers, the fibers are moving away from each other. So, definitely the length will increase and they will be subjected to tension. So, the compression and the tension will depend upon moment. If it is a hogging moment, tension will be at top and compression will be at bottom. And if it is a sagging moment, then compression will be at top and tension will be at bottom. Okay?